One other thing we can do to help us understand a contingency table is to calculate odds and odds ratios. You can see I've taken the same table we've been working with, employed versus unemployed GSS respondents who've been asked whether there should be increased the same or less government spending on unemployment benefits. And I filled out this table not with the raw numbers or the percentages, but with the proportions. The proportions are useful here because they act as uh, probabilities, and we can calculate odds and odds ratios based on those probabilities. Let's go ahead and calculate an odds for people who are employed, believing there should be increased government unemployment benefits. I'm going to list this as O for odds, and I'll use the subscript E for employed slash M for increased benefits just to help us keep track of what we're doing. We know that the odds are equal to some probability divided by 1 minus that probability. In this case, the probability of favoring increased government spending is 0.362 and 1 minus 0.362 is going to be 0.638. So our odds for this group of individuals is 0.567. Let's go ahead and calculate our odds for people who are unemployed and think that employment benefits by the government should be increased. Again, we'll have some probability divided by 1 minus that probability. And the probability of interest here is 0.494 divided by 0 0.506. And that's going to equal 0.976. So looking at these odds for a minute, we can see that when we talk about odds, we know that if it's a 50-50 probability, the odds are 1 to 1. So when we look at the unemployed people who believe there should be increased government benefits, that's nearly a 1 to 1 odds, 0 0.976 to 1. Anytime we get to a cell that has half of the respondents in it, we're going to have those 1 to 1 odds. You can see for the employed individuals who think there should be increased benefits, there's only 36.2% of those employed individuals who think benefits ought to be increased, so the odds has to be less than 1. Of course, if these people were more favorable, and over 50% were in these cells, cell 1, 1, and cell 2, 1, then our odds would be greater than 1. We can compare these two numbers by calculating an odds ratio. In this case, I'm going to calculate my odds ratio and I'll list that as OR, and I'm going to calculate the odds ratio of the unemployed group to the employed group. I happen to like odds ratios that are greater than 1, and I'm going to ensure that it's that way because the odds of the unemployed group favoring government benefits are larger than the other group. If we take the ratio of two odds, which in this case will be our odds for unemployed over the odds for the employed, we get point 976 divided by 0.567 and we end up with an odds ratio of 1.72. That number makes it much easier to describe the differences in these two groups of individuals and what it tells us is the odds of unemployed people favoring increased benefits from the government are over 1.7 times greater than for people who are employed. And this goes nicely with comparing our two percentages, the 49.4% for the unemployed respondents and the 36.2% for the employed. And it gives us a nice kind of dimensionless metric.